Hello everyone, Raphael here from Network Engineer Pro. In this video, I want to walk you through the solution for the BGP AS Override Lab. If you want to follow along, you can download the EVENG topology file and the initial configs from NetworkEngineerPro.com. I went ahead and put the link in the description for this lab, so check it out. In this lab, there's two topologies. There's one with interfaces only that's a little bit easier to read, and there's one with complete IP addressing. Loop prevention in eBGP is done by verifying the AS number in the AS path. If the router receives an update from its neighbor and it sees its own AS number in the AS path field, it's not going to accept the update. That can cause a problem in certain scenarios like this one where we have multiple customers connecting to the provider using the same AS number. If you scroll down, you can see the task for this lab. Task number one is to configure IBGP peerings between PE11 and PE12. Task number two is to configure eBGP peerings between PE11 and CE1. Task number three is to configure eBGP peerings between PE12 and CE2. Task number four is to make sure you're using the directly connected links for each peering. Task number five is on each CE router, advertise their loopback prefixes into BGP. Task number six is to use Nextop Self to fix any Nextop processing issues. Task number seven is to use the AS override feature so CE1 and CE2 accept each other's loopback prefix in their BGP tables. Task number eight, which is the final task, is that there must be full reachability between the CE's loopbacks. Now that we understand what the tasks are, make sure you have this EVNG lab fired up, the initial configs ready to go, and let's get started. I'll go ahead and get started with task number one, which is to configure IBGP peerings between PE11 and PE12. From here, I'll go to config T, router BGP 1000, neighbor 10.10.10.12, remote AS 1000. I know I'm gonna need next hop self here, so I'm gonna hit up arrow, neighbor, next hop, self. And since I'm here, I might as well configure the peering towards CE1. So I'll say neighbor 10.10.111.1, remote AS 100. Now I'll go over to PE12 and do the same thing. Config T, router BGP 1000, neighbor 10.10.10.11, remote AS 1000. And you can see there the log message saying that P12's neighbor, its BGP neighbor, 10.10.10.11 is up. Now P12 is going to need next top self towards PE11. So I'll hit up over here, erase a little bit of config, and type next top self. I'll also go ahead and configure the neighbor statement for CE2, neighbor 10.10.212.2, remote AS 100. Now, if I want to verify the IBGP peerings here, I can say do show IP BGP summary. From here, you can see that P12 has two neighbors. Its neighbor 10.10.10.11, which is P11, has been up for 46 seconds and we're receiving no prefixes. The other neighbor 10.10.212.2, which is CE2, is not up because we didn't configure the other end. I'll go ahead and do that now. I'll jump over to CE2 and from here, config T, router BGP100, neighbor 10.10.212.12, remote AS, 1000. You can see here that the log message says the neighbor's up. I can verify this by saying do show IP BGP summary. And I can see that CE2's neighbor has been up for nine seconds and we're receiving no prefixes. Now I'll jump over to CE1 and configure its eBGP pairing towards PE11. So I'll go here to config T, router BGP 100, neighbor 10.10.111.11, remote AS 1000. And you can see here that the log message for the BGP neighbor 10.10.111.11, which is PE11, is up. I can verify this by saying do show IP BGP summary. And I can see that CE1's neighbor has been up for 16 seconds and we're receiving no prefixes. Now, at this point, we've taken care of tasks number one through four and six. The next thing I need to do is task number five, which is on each CE router, advertise their loopback prefix into BGP. But before I do that, what I want to do is I want to enable the debugging of BGP updates on the customer routers. So I'll say do debug IP BGP updates. I'll go to CE number two and do the same thing. Do debug IP BGP updates. Now from here on CE2 to advertise its loopback prefix into BGP, I'm going to use the network statement and say network 2.2.2.2 .2 .2 .2 mask 
255.255.255.255 and hit enter. I'm going to jump to CE1 and see what's going on. Now, if you look at the debug message that showed up on CE1, it received the update from PE11 about the 2.2.2.2 slash 32 prefix. This prefix was denied because the AS path contained our own AS. So CE2, the originating router in AS100, sent the update into the provider network. The provider sent it back down to CE1, whose AS is also 100. CE1 saw that number, AS100, in the AS path and said, I cannot accept that. There must be a loop. I cannot accept a prefix that has my own AS number in it. So now on CE1, let me advertise its loopback prefix into BGP and see if anything different happens on CE2. So I'm already in the BGP process. So from here, I'll use the network statement 1.1.1.1 mask 255.255.255 dot 255 and hit enter. Let me jump back to CE2 and look at its debugs. Look at the most recent debug on CE2. It's the same exact problem, but in the other direction. CE2 received an update from PE12 about the 1.1.1.1 slash 32 prefix. It was denied due to the AS path containing our own AS. Remember, eBGP loop prevention, you're not going to accept a prefix if your own AS number is in the AS path. I can confirm that CE2 did not place this prefix in its BGP table by saying do show IP BGP. The only prefix here is my own locally originated prefix for the loopback, which is 2.2.2.2 slash 32. At the end of the day, what we need to do is we need to modify the AS path information somehow so that the customers can accept the updates in. You can do this two ways. You can do allow AS in on the customer side, which from the customer's perspective, it says, hey, if I receive an update with my own AS number, it's totally fine. I'm going to accept it in. The other way that you can fix this is by using the BGP AS override feature. This is going to be done on the provider side's BGP config. So I'll go to PE12 and in its BGP config, which I'm already in, I'm going to say neighbor 10.10.212.2 AS override and hit enter. Let me show you what this does. If I look at the full config, do show run pipe section BGP. We have our neighbor statement towards the customer, which points to AS100. What's going to happen now is when PE12 advertises the prefix to this specific neighbor and in the update, the AS number of 100 is included, then PE12 is going to remove AS100 and replace it with its own AS, which is 1000. It's overriding the originating AS with its own. Now, if the updates have additional different AS numbers in the path, like they came from a bunch of different autonomous systems, those numbers won't be changed. Let let me go over to CE2 and see if anything changed. Okay, so CE2 has a message here saying that it's installing a route for 1.1.1.1 slash 32. That's already a good sign. Let me do show IP BGP and look at CE2's BGP table. All right, look at that. CE2 received and accepted the 1.1.1.1 slash 32 prefix from PE12, but look at the AS path information. The AS number on the far right, which is the originating AS, doesn't say 100. It says 1000. And because AS100 was not included in that AS path, CE2 was able to accept this update from PE12, no problem. Now what I'll do is I'll go on PE11 and do the same thing towards its neighbor, CE1. From here, I'll go back to config T, router BGP 1000, neighbor 10.10.111.1, AS override. Now, let me look at the complete configuration here. So do show run pipe section BGP. I see that I have my neighbor statement towards CE1, which points to AS100. I also have my AS override command. So any updates that PE11 sends to CE1, if they include AS100, PE11 is going to replace or override that AS number with its own, which is AS1000. Let me go over to CE1 to see if anything changed. Now, the most recent log message on CE1 says that it's installing a route for 2.2.2.2 slash 32. That's already a good sign. Let me further verify this by saying do show IP BGP. In CE1's BGP table, it has accepted the 2.2.2.2 slash 32 prefix. You can see the AS path information is that the originating AS is 1000. We know secretly it's 100, but PE11 overrode that information with its own thanks to the AS override command. And because AS100 is not in the path, CE1 is able to accept this update 
no problem. Now, the final test, which is task number eight, is that we need to make sure there's full reachability between the CE's loopbacks. So from here, what I can do is say do ping 1.1.1.1 source 2.2.2.2 and hit enter. Oh, I got that backwards. I'm sorry. Source. There we go. CE1 has full reachability to CE2's loopback. What we did at the end of the day is that we modified the AS path information so that CE1 and CE2 were allowed to accept the routes in by using the AS override command. The key thing to remember about the AS override command is that this is going to be done on your provider side. Allow AS in, on the other hand, is another command that fixes this problem in a slightly different way, and that's done on the customer side. And that completes the BGP AS override lab. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments. Thanks.